Bluey the video game sure is one of the games of all time. From what I've seen among the community, most people do not like this game very much. Now, I don't think anybody expected it to be the next revolution in gaming, but I think it's fair to say people were disappointed. Of course, I played the game, I even live streamed it here on YouTube. So in this video, I have to answer the question, is the Bluey video game really that bad? Let's break it down. I'm going to write my story now. Obviously, I watch Bluey for the plot. If you played the game for the plot as well, then I think the developers actually did a pretty good job. The game is split into four episodes that follow a larger story. Bluey, Bingo, Mom and Dad stumble upon an old buried treasure map that Bandit made with his brothers back in the 80s. Now, it's up to us to help them track down Stripe, Rad, and find the buried treasure. Along the way, you'll of course explore the healer house, but you also get to run around the park, the creek, and the beach. I know doing a scavenger hunt theme is pretty lame and unoriginal, but I think it's a good way to incorporate many different locations and characters from the show. Once you finally find all the pieces of the map and dig up this mysterious lost treasure, it's revealed that the healer boys buried an action figure. You see, when they were kids, they couldn't share it, so Grandpa Bob threatened to take it away. That's when they decided to bury it where nobody could find it. Overall, it's a solid story, and I could see it happening in an actual episode. So far, there's really nothing to complain about. Well, I've got a game for you. You can play as any of the four main healers and swap between them at any time. You can run, jump, kick, and pick up objects. The gameplay is very simple. A lot of the time, you're going around collecting things, and it does get boring pretty fast. Luckily, there are also mini games you can unlock. Keepy Uppy, Magic Xylophone, Grounds Lava, and Chattermax. They're all very basic, but can be fun time killers if you play with friends. Obviously, the game was designed with young players in mind, and its basic gameplay reflects that. It's not a game you could play for 5 hours straight, but it could be fun to boot up and play for a few minutes each day. Unfortunately though, the repetitious gameplay does hamper the playing experience, for me at least. It's boring. After completing the main story, you unlock the beach and can explore previous areas to collect stickers to fill out your book. Now, this is where the game stops being fun. Collecting all the stickers just takes forever and is so tedious, especially getting the plants. Unlike the others, where all you have to do is pick them up, you get the plants once you fully water them. This means you have to find a watering can, fill it up, bring it to the plant, water it, refill the watering can, come back, and then you can finally get the sticker. My advice is don't bother to 100% the game. Once you beat the main story, you're good. Your reward for 100%ing the game are a bunch of hats that don't even look good on the character models and a picture that we've pretty much seen already in the episode of The Beach. I say, if you play the game for the game itself, it can be fun, but if you play to complete all objectives, you probably won't have a good time. Hooray! There are some things in this game that I like quite a bit. The music that plays in the background, just like the music of the real show, is great. I'm not sure if any of these were made specifically for the game, or if they're just edited versions of tunes we already have. Either way, I like it. But the best thing about this game is your reward for beating the main story. Your picture book fills with actual drawings of the characters, and they are so refreshing to see after having to stare at the awkward art style of the game for the last few hours. I like these a lot, especially the ones of the young healer boys. After seeing these, I was really excited to see what the final picture would be for finding all the collectibles, and I was pretty disappointed to see it was basically a screenshot from an episode. Not hooray. Okay, I'm gonna try to go through these fast because there are a lot more things I don't like than do like. Number one, lots of recycled voice lines that are ripped straight from episodes. It ruins the flow of the dialogue and just sounds off. Number two, Pixelated visuals. So many objects in this game are in such low resolution, it boggles my mind. It just looks so ugly. Number three, voices are weird sometimes. This one isn't a big deal, as there's not much that can be done about it, but Bluey and especially Muffin. We made a sticker book of all the things we're going to do. I think they just stand around and wave and look pretty. Just don't sound right. Number 4, Missing Characters. I know I applauded the game for having many characters from the show in it, but those were all integral to the story. 
Basically, what I'm trying to say is, if they don't play a major role, they're not here. Wouldn't it have been so cool to see other kids playing at the park, the beach, or the creek? Fan favorites like Mackenzie, Trixie, Frisky Socks, and all of Bluey and Bingo's friends are nowhere to be seen. Number five, lots of cutscenes. Even deep into the game, you have to stop and listen to somebody spell out what to do next every five seconds. I know the game is for kids, but come on, all we're doing is walking to the next area. Do you really have to spell it out? Number six, there's no splash animation for falling in the water. It looks bad and I don't like it. Number seven, glitches. Man, is this game buggy. It seems impossible to do a full playthrough without experiencing some kind of glitch that, although funny at times, can really be more annoying than anything. I sentence both of you to horsey rides. The game is mid. Even for a kid's game, it's really nothing special. For me, the best part by far are the pictures you unlock at the end. They are fantastic. The game can be boring and tedious at times, yes, but it can also be really charming and kind of funny. Unfortunately, it has a rushed feel to it, and I really would have liked to see what could have been done if they had more time or a bigger team dedicated to it. Overall though, I'm going to give the game 4.7 Red Chatter Maxes out of 10, just slightly below average. But hey, at least it's better than the mobile game. That's all for this video. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Comment below and let me know what you think of this game. I'm really interested to see what you have to say. With all that said, I'll see you in the next video.